Thanks. Well, thanks for showing up. I've mean, yeah. been busy before, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's a quick remark to, to the back to Tim. Alexander, I, I mentioned to Michael that if anyone's watching, you've been strong really the entire month and you've been in here a few times because of that. But I will have to say, when I saw you pull up there in the winter circle and you were sitting there for a while, I thought to myself, that's a guy who doesn't know just what happened. <laughs> no, I still don't. Um, I'm still I'm still on the last lap actually with Brian yelling at me to like pull the question and cut so I was like, what? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> um, but no, I mean it's it's, a, it's an unbelievable result for the team, and you know just is a testament to how hard everyone has worked this entire month, and we've been strong really from from day one on Monday, and um, it's made my life that much easier, and made my debut at, at Indianapolis in, in the 500 uh, a lot more smooth than than it, than it could have gone. Uh, Alex, how tough was it though? Where did, did you actually run out of gas coming down the main street? Because he looked like you were coasting. Yeah, it was sputtering out of four for sure, but I was afraid, so I just pulled the clutch anyways because they were walking me through where P2 was. and I mean, it was close, obviously. I mean, yeah. very close for comfort, but, but obviously um, the people on the timing stand knew what was going on and, and we made it work. But as a rookie, I mean, you had to do a lot of things today to put yourself in that position. I mean, uh, to be very. Uh, I don't know, be very disciplined and stuff. How tough was that? What, what should you look back on this first experience of the 8500? Just how tough was it to do all that? No, I just, I really was focused on taking it one lap at a time. And, and the emotional roller coaster of this race is ridiculous. <laughs> and um, there was moments where I was really stoked, moments where I was heartbroken, moments where I was stoked again and heartbroken. And I was like, wow, I need to see a psychiatrist after this. <laughs> but, um, I, it, it, was, it was tough, but really I just focused on doing the job that I could. And, and Brian, you know, has a very calming demeanor on the radio, and the spotters were, were fantastic. I knew everything that was going on, and I just focused on, on my job and what I needed to do and, and making sure the car was in the right spot all the time. Just a reminder, if you're on that side, make sure that Susie can see. Alex, you're on the other side. I remember I had to look. It was February 23rd, and you said, I have no idea what I don't know. You, you're clueless about this series. And three months later, <laughs> <laughs> you said that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> I know what a weight jacker is now, though, if anyone's interested. <laughs> Three months later, yeah. you're in a D5. This was, I don't know if it was plan B, I don't want to call it that, but this this is not where you thought you'd be. No, it isn't. It isn't at all, and that's no secret, but I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic to be here, and... You know, from the first race, race at St. Pete, I felt immediately at home in the championship. And you know, there's been it's been there's been some struggling, some difficult weekends, and we've had our struggles. And you know, it's been a it's been a new new experience for me. It's been a new experience for the merger of Brian Hart Autosport and Jody Autosport. But you know, it's been a, a phenomenal group of people, and we've worked very hard, um, you know, every day to, to try and improve and, and, and get things better. And, you know, really the Indy GP for us was, was a big step forward in terms of confidence and, and kind of the general understanding of where we were at. And to carry that forward into all of the practice qualifying and, and now this is um, it's phenomenal. It's just a huge testament to the great people I have around me. For, for Brian, uh, I assume, you found this driver. Where did you find him and how? <laughs> well, actually, actually, thank you, but Michael found him. Oh, I mean, he was certainly known to well, us. I've known him. You know, we followed his career all the way through when he was uh, in Formula One and Formula Three, I mean, all, all the way through. So, you know, he was our hot young American prospect to be in Formula One, and you know, he finally achieved his goal last year, which was awesome. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. But I think maybe this maybe in the end it did work out for you. I think it worked out just fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Indianapolis 500 winner Alexander Rossi. You will be introduced with that title for as long as for as long as you're racing. Is there a certain well, how cool is that for you to be knowing that you're going to have that title for the rest of your career, and when will that sink in? Um, yeah, it won't sink in for a while, and I don't want it to. Um, I, I want to enjoy this moment and, and, and enjoy it with the people around me. But it's it's obviously a huge honor and privilege, and it's something that I'm going to carry with a with a great sense of responsibility. And, and you know we need to we need to really push this forward. I mean, it, it was an incredible event for the 100th time, maybe 500, and we need to do everything in our power to to continue the momentum forward and um, make it even bigger next year.
Over here. Uh, as someone who has uh, lived in Alaska, I wondered how you hooked up with the coffee people in Fairbanks. <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever been to Alaska? Yes, I have. And, okay. In Anchorage. And you, did you? Uh, it was cold. <laughs> you were there in the winter, then, right? It was dark a lot as well. You were there in the winter. Did you watch the Monaco Grand Prix on TV this year instead of the Indy 500? Oh, I watched it this morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, he was a guy that my father raced in an amateur series in Northern California. Um, he raced against him. Michael Gesser? Michael Gesser, yes, of Alaska Coffee Roasting. And um, my dad pulled him up to the go kart track at Sonoma one day and had him watch. And he was impressed and liked our story and what we were trying to do. And he's been involved um, every step of the way through the good and bad times for, for over 10 years now. Alex, uh, headlines across the world are going to be talking about you know the rookie winning the Indy 500. Uh, with your extensive open wheel background, how fair is that to call you a rookie? And, and I'd like to also hear a little bit about how your previous experience prepared you uh, for any cars, especially uh, the Indy 500, if at all. Well, considering the only actual site of an oval that I had ever been to was Phoenix in February, I'd say I'm definitely a rookie on ovals for sure. Um, obviously, street courses I have an understanding about, but you know, regardless, Indy cars is a whole different can of worms than anything else that I've been a part of. It's incredibly competitive and incredibly close, and you have to be perfect all three days. Um, everyone does around you, drivers, teams, and. There's a, there's a lot that goes on um, that people don't really see, and, and it's, a, it's an incredibly challenging championship. Um, so there's a lot that I've had to learn, and I have a lot to learn still. Um, and I need to, to continue working hard to, to carry that forward into Detroit and Texas. Uh, Jonathan Green, Speed City. Uh, Alex, um, just heard one of the other journalists mention, you know, where'd you find this kid? Um, for those of us who followed you throughout this, watching you try to get that break, now you and your father and the rest of your family have worked so hard, just share with us that journey from when you left California. It's a long journey. Um, yeah, no, I, I left California when I was 16 to go to Europe. Um, the goal was to, to, to get to Formula One. It was that way ever since I was 10 years old. Um, the reason I went to Europe was I had a test. I won a test with BMW Sauber F1 after winning the Formula BMW World Finals in 2008. And um, went over there, started racing in Europe, and got involved with, at the time, it was Team Lotus. As a, as a kind of junior development driver and started to learn the world of Formula One and kind of stayed in that kind of role all the way through 2014 um, when I got an opportunity to be the reserve driver for, for Man of Russia, or Russia at the time. And 2014 was, was an incredibly challenging year for, for a lot of different reasons and at the end of the year I didn't actually know what I was going to do. And, it was the beginning of 15 where I actually first met Michael um, in an in a owner and driver capacity. And we had talked about potentially putting something together in 2015. Um, and, and it didn't really, I, I got an opportunity to go back to Europe and race GP2. And I took that chance and it, it resulted in doing five Grand Prix at the end of last year. And as well as finishing out GP2. Um, things didn't quite go according to plan uh, for 2016 in Europe. And so, as we already said, things worked out incredibly well for me to come here and drive French Audi Autosport with the car that they were forming with Brian Herta. And um, four months later, here we are. Alex, you hadn't even seen this place until Easter Sunday when you came out here with Doug and Connor and checked the place out. What did you think at that time? I mean, did you thought, did you even daydream, wow, what it'd be like to win here? Um, you know, every time I get in a race car, I want to win. And I was really, I mean, I was incredibly disappointed with 11th, and a lot of people were expecting me to be happy with it. There was actually a bit of criticism that I wasn't happy with 11th as a rookie, and it's like, well, I'm here to win, and that's the goal that I have every single time I get in a race car. And so, did I imagine it would happen? No, but did I want it to happen? Yeah, was I working for it to happen? Absolutely. Um, and I'm glad that, that we were able to make it, make it all come, come true. The, the, uh, I think you said the other day the place that you had watched last year was what, the Stars and Bard or something like that? How big of a uh, training section do you suppose you had there today? Have you heard from any? Yeah, I mean, I, I got a lot of um, you know, good luck messages from people that were in Monaco. And, you know, I know, I know quite a few are watching, so hopefully uh, they stay till the end because in the middle of the race it wasn't looking so great. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, to, to be able to pull it out, I think there'll be a lot of people pretty happy with it. Jordan Bianchi, SBNation.com.
this is for Michael and um, Alexander. Um, you talk about Formula One, and both had experience there, and it didn't work out. You guys, the way you wanted it. Have you had some kind of connection or bond over that? And, and something, Michael, there's something you can kind of tell him about, you know, coming here and having to kind of restart. I don't know if I would say that, but you know, I guess there's some things that we could definitely relate to because you know the scene is quite different over there than it is here, and I think. You know, the thing that I tried to explain to him that, you know, when you come over here, you're going to really enjoy the racing. You know, over there, it's a lot more politics, and it's just not as fun. Whereas over here, it's all about racing, and, and it's fun if you're a driver. And, and I think I think he sees what I was talking about. Man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And obviously, I mean, having both of these guys next to me who have been incredibly successful in, in American Open World Motorsports and in motorsports in general um, has been usually helpful for me because you can relate to someone that gets it and, and can kind of talk to you from a driver's perspective and that makes it a huge amount of difference. Alexander, just can you talk a little bit about the role that your teammates played in getting you to the finish up and you say fuel and uh, Michael, obviously you don't want to see people crash in the pit lane but that kind of delivered the wind. Does that make it easier to pay for all that crash then? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it does. It doesn't make it easier, but uh, you know, it's such an unfortunate thing for those two because they were really, really strong. I think they were going to be a major factor at the end of the race, and I honestly couldn't believe it when I saw them take each other out. It was just, uh, ugh, couldn't believe it. But, uh, you know, like I told you earlier, you know, it's like, well, we still got three more bullets in the gun, and, uh, you know, and, you know, as it was going, we were seeing him, him and, and Carlos come back up through, and, and then we knew his strategy, and we knew, uh, you know, that we had two different strategies going there in the end, and uh, hoped that one of them was going was to pay off. And so they both did, because we came on one too. Alexander, uh, much has been said about the fact that you excelled the last four laps, but what elements, what skills, what got you to that position from the beginning of the race to that point? Um, I don't know. It was just patience, and, and Brian kept reminding me that the way we were going to win this race was was by hitting the fuel number, and it was it was very difficult because obviously I had at the time, I mean, I had cars in front of me that I knew I was quicker than, and, and throughout the whole race we were overtaking cars, and it was very hard to then not do that and, and kind of look big picture. So I wouldn't have been able to do that without uh, without Brian on the radio and, and offering you know, the support and wisdom that I needed. And, you know, what also made the job easier was an app auto parts curb on it was, was unbelievable to drive. And it just, I could focus solely on hitting a fuel number and I didn't really have to think about balance issues or inconsistencies. And, and um, you know, it's, like I've said before, it's a testament to, to all the, the people in the background. Uh, Alexander, at what point in the race did you think you could win it? Was it when you led some laps early in, you know, on or was it trying to hit that number? When did it? Kind of play oh crap, I might be doing this thing. Probably lap five, if I'm honest, because I, I had a bit of a conservative start, but then I was able to overtake cars, and I was overtaking big cars, and I knew that if that was the case, then, then we definitely have the opportunity to go forward, and, and there was a couple of setbacks that we had, and pit stops that put us back, and we had to come forward again, and every time we fell back, we were able to come forward, and, and I knew that, that we were strong, and I knew that the pace was there, and that we were able to pass cars and follow cars, and it wasn't much issue, so I... That's why I mentioned the emotional roller coaster because I knew we had a car that was good enough to win. Um, and when you see yourself on the pylon and whatever, 29s, you're like, this isn't great. But um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was kind of through the whole race. I, I just you know, made sure that the overtakes I did were, were necessary and, and strong. And um, it it's, it's, was a culmination of a lot of things about us. Alex, back row uh, center, you tell me on Saturday, glad out that you were going to win. And I thought that's great that he's so optimistic. Did you think on Saturday afternoon that you were going to win? Well, I think the question was, you know, how do you want to, like, I don't know. But like I said, I get in the race car with the goal of winning up being on pole, being the fast car on track, and I am pretty pissed off that doesn't happen. Um, so, you know, I, I go into that with that, with that mindset, and, um, you know, I, I didn't have any preconceived notions of me winning, but I certainly wanted to, and I certainly was doing everything I could to make it happen. Michael, uh, during your career, you came out well pretty close to winning. Were you a little bit jealous today? <laughs> no, I was happy for him. You know, whatever. You know, my driving career just wasn't meant to be. You know, we won, we led a lot of laps here, but we never led the right one. But uh, no, I was just so happy for our team. You know, not jealous at all. You know, just proud, 
proud to have these guys. Uh, try, proud to be a part of it with all of them, and uh, you know the whole team. Not only you know these guys here, but everybody on the '98 car, but then everybody on Andretti Autosport, because this is absolutely a team effort, and uh, you know of all five cars. So um, no, not jealous at all. One for Alex, one for Michael. Alex, what did you think of the nature of this type of racing? Very high speed, a lot of passing. There were 54 passes today. What did you think of that? I mean, the only other oval that you've raced on was at Phoenix, which is a far different type of style of racing. One for you when it finished. Um, yeah, I mean, it was okay. I, I, I obviously was comfortable with it, um, but that was largely in part to the fact that because we have a fight for our team, we were doing organized group runs um, at the end of every single day. And where I started from in, on Monday on a group run to where I ended now is completely different. And, and as Michael just said, it's a, it's a team effort. And all four dr other drivers were totally willing to help me understand how the car is supposed to feel, what you're supposed to do, little tricks. And, and I mean, this is, we do that every single night discuss things and it's a huge, it's a huge effort on all of our parts and um, you know, I'm just honored to be able to drive next to the for them. And Michael, you bring in Napa as a sponsor, uh, very well known in auto racing, you give them a victory in the 100th Indianapolis 500. Is this going to remain on the car the rest of the year? I hope so. I mean, we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll have to talk, but uh, you know, the goal is you know, when we did this deal, we came together so fast, but, you know, we already were starting to talk about, okay, what, what could more, you know, the future be, and I'm hoping this might speed it up a little bit. <laughs> Alexander, uh, the back. Uh, when you look at your whole month of May, your first real month of May, running practice every day, qualifying, the rest, it's not like a standard base weekend. What did you make of the month and all the extracurricular activities that come, that come with this month? Uh, it was busy. I was very happy to get into the race car at <laughs> 12.03 today. Um, it was like, finally, I can actually go do this and I don't have to talk about it anymore, but here I am talking about it. So. <laughs> and I think the next three days, four days, month, is going to be pretty, pretty incredibly busy as well. But, um, you know, PR team is pretty great, so we'll, we'll get through it. Yep. For Michael and Brian, uh, what did you see in this guy that told you he was something special? What just stands out about him that makes him maybe a little different from someone else? Um, well, I think, you know, his career, I mean, he, he, was, he was brought up in the right way, and he was always competitive in every formula he was in. Um, but I think what makes him different from some others is he's, he's quite calm. You know, he doesn't get excited or anything, it seems like. <laughs> you know, here he is winning the Indy 500, he's like, eh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just the way he is, which I think works good for him when he's in the race car. I, I had no idea it was this good. <laughs> it was really, I mean, I was aware of it, but, you know, frankly, it was, uh, you know, Michael had, had a previous relationship, so when we started putting this deal together, and the, the, when we got to the point of the topic of drivers, uh, you know, immediately they brought Alex up. He was always the first choice, and, uh, so we were able to get that deal together really quickly, and, you know. But I, I really enjoy working. Like you said, he's. I think personality-wise, he and I have some similarities. Although he's even calmer than me. Uh, but uh, you're calm. It, it works. <laughs> it works. It works really. It works really well together. Just, uh, and, and again, I, I give. I, I have to give Michael the credit. I mean, back when I drove for him, you know, and we had all those great years together with the four of us. And, you know, it wasn't an accident. You know, he chose people based on, on how they fit in and, and putting these groups of people together and I think you know he really saw the same thing here was a good fit and uh, you know I, I don't know if he gets enough credit for you know having the vision of putting understanding what a team is and not just individuals but putting a team together. Okay we're going to wrap in just a couple minutes and we've got 11.30 Susan? Yeah 11.30 tomorrow. 11.30 11 tomorrow. 11 tomorrow. See it continues Alexander. <laughs> we're talking. Alright I mean uh, this one's for Michael. Michael, like I sit next to you, uh, got some other irons in the fire with Manor F1, and we might see him in a Grand Prix car later in the season. Um, I, I, what are your thoughts on really? just keeping that guy in the Indian car? Yeah, and, 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 rather than, than, than him, you know, driving in the back of the grid in F1. Well, I can certainly say I'm not in a Grand Prix car anytime soon, so I'm a reserve driver, so it's very, very different. I sit around and pretend to look important. <laughs> 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 
there is no track involved. I drive to the track. <laughs> well, you remember we're a pretty big club here at One Mind End. So. And then? Okay, one more. Uh, Rodrigo França, Jeep uh, Magazine, Brazil. Uh, I have a question to Alex. Alex, uh, uh, tell us about your, the drivers that inspired your car here, please. Just uh, alongside Formula One, as you tried the car here in Formula One, and also the Indy 500, please. Um, okay, so in, in Europe, it was Mika Hakkinen, um, because he he was kind of the underdog against Michael and Ferrari, and it was, it was always spectacular. You always want to go for the underdog a little bit. And so, so to watch him pull off some, some pretty incredible victories and, and um, upsets was, was pretty cool for me to watch. And honestly, the, the very first um, Indy 500 that I can remember watching, and I'm not saying this because of anything that's sitting right next to me, but it was 2006 and it was with Marco. And that race still stands out in my mind and it blew me away that someone as a rookie was about to win. And, um, you know, it's, it's, that was something that, that I'll remember for, for the rest of my life, for sure. Well, thank you very much. And before, I just want to do want to mention we brought up the history of the 98 car, the name, and, and one of the recognizing yeah, yeah, Gary Agatanian right. here. Oh, yeah. part yeah. of the great race. Yeah. We're part of this We're getting together, that's awesome. Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.